Have you ever wondered how much money do you need to build a PC? Nowadays people spend 500, 900 or even few thousand euros or dollars for their gaming or video editing PCs. But what if you have just over 100 euros? 120 to be specific. Can you build one that would give you an ok experience in your daily tasks as well in some esports gaming title? Well, I tried to do so and prepared some benchmarks including 3D Mark, CSGO, Fortnite and few others so you would know what performance to expect from such a build. So, an idea to build an ultra budget PC crossed my mind a few times lately. Also, I thought it would be a good way to encourage those who have a very tight budget. The best way to find all the parts for a similar build is to look for local deals. You should look up in a second hand local sites like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace and do not forget to check the prices over eBay. This is what I managed to get under 120 euros or 130 US dollars. Let's start with a CPU. I've got second gen i5-2400. It has 4 cores and 4 threads, a base clock of 3.1 GHz and a boost clock of 3.4 GHz. Got it for 20 euros. Also the seller included some old cooler master CPU cooler, but as it appeared later on, it was not compatible with 1155 socket and I couldn't find any adapter. So in the end, I used Intel stock cooler, but you could definitely get a stock one for free or 2 euros max. Regarding motherboard, I tried to find the cheapest one with an H61 chipset and nailed the MSI H61 board for 23 euros. Also it had a few bent pins, but I've managed to fix it quite easily. Then I managed to find 8GB of RAM for 20 euros. I know a used power supply can be risky, but I couldn't find anything new within my budget. So I've got an Ergon 650 watt power supply. It's a bit of an overkill for this system, but it cost me 15 euros so I couldn't complain. Regarding storage, I've decided to go for the cheapest new 120GB SSD, so I paid just over 17 euros for this Patriot Burst drive. Keep in mind, the motherboard I'm using in this build has only SATA 2 and no SATA 3 connectors, so the SSD speed will not be as good as with SATA 3, but still we will be able to have really good booting times and overall system performance. Since I already had a few older GPU models, I've decided to use GTX 650 Ti 1GB version from Asus. It's somewhere around 20 euros in my country. In total, I've spent 115 euros or 128 US dollars. Basically that's it, it's everything you need to build a PC. But hey, what about PC case you might ask? Well, you can run a PC without one having in mind such a tight budget. You will see that using a box is quite ok. But for this build I will be using a case and a few other parts since I want to donate it to a local kids foundation. So let's start building. First of all I made sure all the used parts are clean and ready to be used. One of the RAM sticks I've got had no heatsink, so I've decided to mount one. It's completely unnecessary, but I wanted to fix this aesthetics flaw. Since I will be using a case later on, I've decided to test everything on a test bench, just to be sure everything works fine. everything seems to be working ok, so it's time for installing windows, downloading games and benchmarks. Free performance. Overclocking your graphics card will give you a better game performance for free. 
I've used MSI Afterburner in a combo with the Unigen Heaven benchmark. I definitely recommend using this method since it's one of the easiest and fastest way to find stable OC settings. After you do so, please be sure to leave your system for a longer stress test before using it on a daily basis. In total I've run 5 general benchmarks and 5 game benchmarks. Let's start with the SSD speed test. As I mentioned before, we are using SATA 2 instead of SATA 3. But I can tell you, the system feels responsive and fast. I've also tested Windows boot time and it's around 22 seconds from clicking a power button to fully loaded Windows. There were no surprises in a Cinebench R20 benchmark since I've got quite common scores for i5-2400 CPU. 891 points in a multi-threaded test and 238 points in a single-threaded benchmark. 3 Mark Skydiver test felt ok and FPS numbers were staying around 50. We got 9891 points. But Firestrike benchmark was running quite crappy. Most of the time I saw around 15 FPS and so we got 2860 points. I can say that GTX 650 Ti is really pushing back our performance here. Next Unigine Heaven benchmark at 1080p low settings. We got an average of 69.6 FPS and a score of 1753. How about the sports titles I've mentioned before? First up we have CSGO and with competitive settings at 1080p we got amazing 142 FPS on average. Gameplay was smooth and a casual player could pump video settings to high for sure, unless you are aiming for 120 FPS all the time. At 1080p and high settings this PC delivers really good performance in League of Legends. At 116 FPS on average and 86 FPS 1% lows gives you really smooth gameplay. Fortnite. I've used competitive settings on 1080p, meaning view distance on Epic textures on high and everything else on low. The game was really playable with 67 FPS on average and 1% lows were quite ok as well. There were some FPS dips to mid 40s here and there, mostly during intense battles, but if you want to have fun in this game, you will definitely will. Rocket League is another title I've tested. With max settings at 1080p we had a really good experience. 71 FPS on average and 1% lows were also incredibly good here, basically with no FPS dips at all. I've used a benchmark tool for World of Tanks, so no actual gameplay recorded, but it's really handy to use similar tools since it's easier to compare between systems. At 1080p with medium benchmark settings, we got 72 FPS on average and 43 FPS as 1% lows. And here comes a summary of all the benchmarks in one place. In all of the games GPU was bottlenecking quite hard and CPU stayed around 50 to 60% load. I bet i5-2400 could handle way better video card. In case you are mainly in playing games with such a system and their performance is number one priority, the first upgrade you should do is your GPU to something like RX 570 or GTX 970. And that would increase FPS dramatically in every game. Yep, you do not need a case to build a similar PC. Sure, you can buy one if you can, but while you are saving money, you could use a motherboard box or any other smaller box you could find around. As I mentioned before, I'm planning to donate this PC to a local kids foundation, which is helping and educating kids in coding. So I need to be sure it's not only working as it should, but looking good as well. I've decided to go with a deep cool matrix 30 case, since it's just 23 euros and even has a tempered glass side panel. In case you need a super budget case with a side panel, I really recommend this one. At the top you'll find an unboxing video I made a few weeks ago. By default this case comes with one exhaust fan, but since it's quite small case, 
I wanted to ensure a better airflow, so I've added an intake fan as well. And a LED strip. So here it is, a PC for anyone that wants to get into a PC building, but has a limited budget. Thanks for stopping by and checking my video. Click like and subscribe if you liked it and see you soon.